The Honourable Leighton Cosgrove. Mr Chair, um, I want to raise a couple of questions and I thank the Minister for um, uh, noting that, that Minister Brownlee will be available uh, after dinner and, and we rise in about five minutes. So I will raise a couple of questions and between now and the dinner break, not expecting uh, answers. Um, the Minister was good enough to release the Cabinet advi or the advice to us uh, and in essence we received one paper from the Ministry of the Environment and um, that I just want to raise and flag that. That seems, I accept the pressure of time and pulling all this together from the various departments. I note from the paper that a vast number of uh, departments and government agencies were, um, were consulted and the, the date on the document is, is I think the, the, uh, the 13th of the 9th. Um, I see, though, very little, if anything, at all in here about what, was respond what responses those departments had. I know it's a, a wide range of views and a wide range of agencies that may have some uh, stake in this, but I didn't, it, what isn't reflected in the paper, given that I'm, I'm told by Minister Brownlee that this was basically the advice paper, the DPMC uh, gave no written formal advice or DIA or, or, any, or any of the other agencies that I would be interested to know uh, what response was uh, put forward by the agencies who were consulted with. The second is uh, just uh, a number of queries we have in respect of part two. Uh, part two, clause six, four, where an order and council, council is made under subsection one may grant an exemption from or modify or extend any provision of any enactment, including but not limited to. And I see, and I would be grateful if we could get some feedback, acts like the cadastral survey. Uh, part 2, clause 6.4. The cadastral survey act. Um, I'm, I'm not a surveyor or an expert in that in cadastral mapping, uh, but, also, but I'd be grateful to know why that is included. Also, the social security act, given that the social security act does provide for quite a few waiver powers, I'm advised, why that would be uh, specifically listed uh, uh, in this uh, document. Uh, so I would raise those issues with uh, the Minister and colleagues after dinner will also have some other issues they raise. But I, I, I accept the need for a swift approach to this crisis and I accept absolutely the pressure that government agencies were under to just pull things together. But it is of concern that the only advice paper that has been released, or according to Minister Brownlee, that was pulled together, a formal advice to the government has been one paper in the name of the Minister of Environment of the 13th of the 9th. And I'm sure the Minister and the Chair will accept that this paper confers on the government very, very wide powers, very, very, very wide discretion to, uh, and powers to act. And uh, even given the pressure of time, I am surprised that DPMC, for instance, uh, DIA, um, Department of Building and Housing, who will have a huge interest in this, uh, would not, given that you know, it has been a number of days since the crisis, would not have had some formal written input into uh, this legislation. I, I find it slightly odd that they would only provide verbal advice, perhaps. And I, again, I accept... This had to be pulled together very, very quickly. But it has been a number of days since we met Minister on, I think it was Saturday or Friday. And uh, I would have thought between now, between then and now, those uh, um, departments would have formalised their advice. If anything, to get on the record their advice to government to ensure that they had uh, you know, executed their duty appropriately. And as I say, there are a wide range, uh, even foreign affairs and trade, Justice, Pacific Island Affairs, um, damn near every government department I think has been consulted, uh, yet there is not uh, any reference that I can find in the Cabinet paper to what their views were, conflicting or otherwise, and I don't um, note that to be obstructive, but it would be either there was total unanimity by every agency, having been a Cabinet Minister, that would be a unique moment in our history, I'm sure you'd agree, Minister. Uh, I'm sure there were differing views and differing flavours. That would then point us to uh, possible I'm risks. sorry to interrupt the honourable member, but the time has come for me to leave the chair. This debate is interrupted. I shall resume the chair at 7.30. God save the Queen.